What's it like to be in the middle of a sea of humanity when you go and beat a number nine ranked team in the country? The third time BYU's beat a top 10 team at home. We're going to ask a man who is right in the middle of it. That's Clark Barrington on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys downloading the show. We're very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto around these parts is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. And right across from me digitally, right to the right, if you're watching this on YouTube, is my good friend and BYU preseason All-American, Clark Barrington, starting left guard for the BYU football program. Clark, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, I want to start off with this. Let's look back at Baylor for a minute here. Uh, I want to start off with the celebration after the game. We'll get to the actual in-game stuff here momentarily, but when you have fans flooding the field, what's it like for you personally to be celebrating with thousands of Cougar fans? You know, it's... It, it's fun. Um, you know, it's always a good time to have them down on the field with us, you know, but uh, it's it's quite hard to get back to the locker room in a timely manner. So, <laughs> you know, it was fun, uh, you know, after the game, uh, Coach Mateos and Coach uh, Grimes were over there on the other sideline. So sprinted over there real quick to make sure I could find them before, you know, the field was packed. So I got to see them and then ran to the other side to try to find my family. and. <laughs> You know, just through all all of the the people down there on the field, it t- took a while. So, well, okay, I I didn't know you went over and talked to Coach Grimey and also to Coach Mateos, but what what was that that like to reunite with two guys that you know very well? Yeah, you know, it's it's just always fun. Um, you know, having those connections with with some of the other guys you play against and and coaches or whatever it be, players and and uh, you know, it's just always a good time to be able to see you know the guys that kind of help help mold me into who I am today. You know, I've had lots of coaches and, and so just whenever I see, see one of them, just, you know, thank them for what they've done and and talk to them a little bit and wish them the best of luck for, for the rest of the season. But, well, that's awesome. I, I think I've told this story, I think the very first time we had you on the show, but I remember talking to Coach Mateo. So we were sitting on those benches outside the student athlete building. We had practice on the, on the SAB fields out there. Me and him were just talking after practice. I had interviewed him. And then we were just kind of making chit chat. And he points at you. And this is when you were, I think, a freshman. Uh, so this, this goes back a ways. And he says, hey, that Barrington kid out there, he's going to be a multi-year starter for BYU. And you hadn't started a game at that point in your career. And I'm like, Okay, well, I'll, I'll we'll see how that pans out. Well, the bet he made, I guess that bet's a relative term, but the proclamation he made <laughs> became true. So props to Coach yeah. he saw it in you from a very early uh, period. For sure. All right, uh, so Clark, let's talk a little bit about this game. You guys are number 21 at the time going into that matchup. Uh, Baylor coming in number nine. Uh, BYU before this game, all time at Lavelle Edwards Stadium against top 10 ranked opponents was two and eight all time. They had not won a game over a top 10 opponent since 1990. Ty Detmer uh, was the quarterback way back when, when they upset number one Miami in 1990. What did it feel like? What was kind of your overall takeaway from that upset win? Um, you know, it's always, it's always good to get a win. Um, you know, of course that's our goal every week. And so, you know, being able to, to kind of go, go in there with, um, you know, the mindset of, you know, wanting to come out on top, um, and then being able to do it, it was, it was great, especially with, you know, what, what happened last year and, and just having that bad taste in our mouth for, for a whole year, you know, we've been looking forward to that for, for a long time. And so I think that helped push us and, and, and play, you know, as well as we did. So uh, you mentioned the fact you had a bad taste from, from that game in Waco in 2021. How good did it feel to get some measure of payback with that win? Yeah, it, it, it felt good. Um, you know, a win's a win and however, whatever way you get it. And so, you know, our defense, you know, stepped up big time and, and we were able to, to move the ball and do the things we needed to do, you know, in, in those 
um, critical moments. And so, you know, just just glad we were able to, to come out on top for that game. I want to read a text to you from a media member down there in, in Texas who covers Baylor. Uh, me and him have known each other for a little while now. Uh, we were going back and forth on this game, and he paid a pretty high compliment, I feel like, to, to you and the rest of the BYU football program. So I'm going to read that text now. Okay. It says, uh, BYU had to listen to their manhood being questioned for almost a full year, and they took it, digested it, and damn sure responded. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that was kind of our – you know, our attitude going into it, um, you know, just like I said earlier, you know, that bad t- taste that we had in our mouth, you know, sat there for, for a while. And so we we're looking forward to, to this game and being able to, you know, prove ourselves. So I want to ask you about the trick play. They, of course, the double pass, uh, Jaron tosses it over to Chase Robert. He then lobs it back to Jaron and you and three of uh, three other guys, Qu- Connor Pay, Harris Lachance and Kingsley Sumatia. It looked like a freaking blockade out there, yeah. rumbling down the field. Uh, how? I just want to ask you this: How long has that play been in the playbook, and how long have you been hoping to have it run? Yeah, it's been it's been in there for I would say two years now. Okay. Um, you know, just just trying to keep you know our trick plays um, up and running, and making sure we're we're staying staying good on on you know just who are blocking and, and the whole scheme of them and all that stuff so you know it, it, it was it was for sure one of the, one of the highlights um you know when it when the play happened and we saw everybody flowing away from from where the ball was actually going to go you know i feel like we all just got super excited and we we're like wow this is this is gonna work we're gonna get into his zone right here so no it was it was a cool it was a cool uh cool play to to be able to run so did it work as well in practice as it did actually on the fo- on the actual playing field? Um, yeah, it, it, it's worked pretty well in practice as okay. well. So. <laughs> so it's one that you hope that they pull out again at some point. And then, it's yeah, like, okay, for sure, for sure, very cool. Uh, last thing on the Baylor game, uh, Clark, is it felt like you on the offensive line. It was a tough night you guys struggled running the ball against them in Waco last year you struggled running the ball against them this past game yeah what makes them so difficult to block and to get those rushing yards yeah you know they're they're super talented up front and um you know super physical big um big bodies up there and you know of course we need to be able to to run the ball you know against whoever we go against and and that's you know where we fell short again um you know but we will continue to improve that and uh you know, they're just great athletes, super fast, physical, strong. And so, you know, they just had a had a really good scheme um, up front, and, and, and that's what made it so difficult. So, Well, conversely, Jaron had, I thought, a pretty effective day throwing the football, and obviously that is due to you guys giving him the time to do that. Uh, when you guys, in those in that two-minute drill in particular, the end of the first half, you guys kind of motor right down the field. Uh, can, did you – see the play he throws that touchdown pass to chase roberts in the corner of the end zone i know that you're probably engaged with the defensive lineman but did you look up and see that play transpired what's your recollection of that play in particular oh well, kind of you can kind of feel when when the d line lets up and so you know the ball is probably out of his hands and then you look for it in the in the sky and and i saw it just float right into to chase and saw him make that that great play and so you know, it was it was it was cool to run down and be able to celebrate that touchdown with Chase and, and the guys. So awesome! Uh, last, I, I mentioned I, I got one more thing on the Baylor game. How physical? Or I guess how much more physical was that ball game versus I guess other ball games you've played in? Because it, it to me, and I, I trust me, I, I'm a I'm an amateur observer at the very best from my my perch up in the press box. But it seemed like to me it was a more physical contest than most I have seen you guys play in recently. Yeah, um, you know, every game brings its its physical aspects, you know, of course. Um, you know, but I think Baylor really prides themselves on on being the most physical team on the field and and that's something that we we take pride in too, you know, is trying to be that most physical team on the field. And so when you get two teams that that want to be the most physical team on the field going up against each other, um, you know, it's you're you're for sure in for a fist fight and so you know, last man standing and uh you know that that type of that, that type of thing. So it, it was physical for sure. 
No rest for the weary. Obviously, as you guys get ready to go to Oregon, I want to ask you a couple of questions about the Ducks here momentarily. First, I need to get a word in on our friends over at Upside. From cringing at the pump to an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting all of us where it hurts, and it really hurts. That's why I want you guys to try Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who is buying gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, you're earning cash back thanks to Upside. All you got to do to get started and get that money is you download the free Upside app. Use the promo code LOCKED, that's L-O-C. C-K-E-D and get $5 or more cash back on your very first purchase of $10 or more. Next claim and offer from wherever you're buying things at, on Upside. Check in at that business. Pay as usual with a credit or debit card and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn up to three times more cash back with Upside. And Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's why they have a 4.8 star rating on the app store. So download the free Upside app today. Use that promo code LOCKED. Once again, that's L-O-C-K-E-D to get $5 or more more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using the promo code locked from our friends over at Upside. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys taking the time uh, to join us. And obviously, when it comes to Clark Barrington joining us here on Locked On Cougars, it's doubly uh, appreciated. Uh, Clark, Obviously, you guys win that game in double overtime. You finish it off, though, I felt like with a flourish. I know the defense won the won the game in the end. The crowd had its impact as well. But you guys, I mentioned the fact you guys struggled running the football. But Lopini Katoa, two straight rushes, and you guys get that touchdown. How satisfying was it that to finally get a rushing touchdown despite all of the issues uh, yeah. getting rushing yards? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, like we mentioned before, you know, it was a tough day to, to rush the ball. But, um, you know, Thankfully, we were able to do it, you know, when it mattered most. And and Peeney's a, a tough back and was able to run, run through some guys and get a few extra yards as well. And so, you know, we were able to do it when it mattered most. And, and so that's, I guess, what, what matters, I guess. Well, obviously, you've got another talented defense you're going up against this week when you go to Oregon. Uh, you're playing in Autzen Stadium. Uh, you're a guy from the Pacific Northwest. So I, I'm, I'm assuming, because you're from Washington, you've got some familiarity with the Ducks. Uh, are you excited to go back up there and play against one of the teams from where you, close to where you grew up? Yeah, yeah, it would be cool. Um, you know, um, their stadium is one that, you know, I've always seen and on TV, seen in photos, you know, heard about whatever, you know, of course they're, they're a great team, you know, and, and you always dream about playing, you know, Oregon or playing in their stadium. And, and so it will be a, it will be a fun game and, and we're super excited. I mentioned they got a pretty talented defense. Uh, uh, Noah Sewell, excuse me, their middle linebacker is a guy who grew up in the shadows of the La Lavelle Edwards Stadium. He went to Orem High, just up the road to BYU. Uh, I know it's uh, some, pretty early in the week, but what have you seen on film from that defense in particular? Yeah, you know, um, they're they're very similar, you know, to to that Baylor defense. You know, they have big bodies, big athletic guys, you know, up front, and then also big athletic guys, you know, in at linebacker as well, and so. You know, it's we we got to bring our A game, and we got to try to be the most physical team. You know, when, when we play them on Saturday, and and hopefully th everything will work out. So, you guys obviously you've jumped up to number twelve in the rankings. Uh, Oregon got back into the rankings this week; uh, they're now number twenty five. So it makes it a top twenty five showdown. I mentioned right before we talked about upside that there's like no rest for the weary. You guys come off a very physical game against Baylor. You're going to Oregon to play a top twenty five team, but in your mind, is it any different? I, I, I talk with coach Satake every so often. I actually mentioned it on his weekly press conference. He says that the rhythm of a football season, it's just, it's every week. You kind of, you come in on a Sunday, you get treatment Monday. It's the day to kind of look back at film. And then from Tuesday on, it's all focused on the next opponent. But yeah. when it comes to these bigger name opponents, is it any different for you? Um, Not really, you know, you got to treat every opponent, you know, whether they're a big opponent or a small opponent, however you, you look at it. But, you know, you got to treat every opponent, you know, the same. Because if, if you don't bring, you know, your A game every every weekend, then, you know, you're you're probably going to lose. And so, you know, who, no matter who you're playing or, or who you're going up against, you know, you got to respect the game, respect the opponent, and, and prepare, you know, the same way, same way every week. So. 
obviously uh, Oregon, uh, they've, they've got a, a new coaching staff up there. I know that uh, Tosh Lupoy, their defensive coordinator, is a guy that your coaching staff is familiar with. That he, it's kind of similar to Dave Aranda in many ways because I know uh, Coach Sataki talked about the fact that him and Dave Aranda used to do like coaching clinics together. Like The, the Baylor staff and BYU, it felt like these staffs knew each other. Oregon's going to be a similar type deal, it feels like. But when it comes to this matchup with the Ducks, what do you think that you guys, I guess, watching film of the Baylor game and now looking forward, where do you feel like you guys need to improve the most as you go on the road? Yeah, for sure. I think I think the biggest thing, you know, for, for the old line offense, you know, is running the ball. That's something we we uh, take pride in. And so, you know, we're, we're going to work very hard this week to, to get better at, at running the ball and, and hopefully it pays off on, on Saturday. I, that's a, I've got an interesting question on that front. When it comes to practicing against your defense, because they're your teammates, they've seen you guys run these same plays, I don't yep. know how many times, how difficult is it to improve the run game when your defense essentially knows what's coming at them? Yeah, it's it's difficult, but I think that's what makes you better, you know? <laughs> when you're running stuff at each other and you know what, what you're going to get, and, and then you're able to successfully um, you know, run that whatever play it is against them. You know, that just shows you, you know, no matter if they, they know the, what the play is or what, what the play is, you, you can still successfully um, run that play. So you got to be a technician, right? You got you to yep. you you run it to, to perfection. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we're seeing your brother continue to play a gadget role. He plays a number of different positions. Uh, I actually had a person ask me, and I, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to kind of lob it at you. Uh, they asked me, is Campbell capable of playing all five positions on the offensive line. I, I said, I can see him playing at least four, both tackle positions and both guards. I guess a center is the only one that's a, that's a question mark in my mind, but is he capable of p- capable of planning, playing anywhere along that O-line? Yeah, he for sure is. Um, you know, he's, he's capable of snapping the ball and making IDs and, and playing center along with, uh, along with uh, guard and tackle. So he, he, he can do it all. <laughs> Uh, okay, who I know you guys grew up together. You said you shared a room together. Where is he? I guess uh, stand in most contrast to you as an offensive lineman. Does that make sense? Uh, kind of. I guess. Um, I like would how, say. How is he most most different from you? I guess is that. I guess he's, yeah. Let's see. I don't know. Um, I would say he 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 might be a little little quieter than I am. Um. You know, if 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 I have a good block or something, I'll I'll let the guy know. Uh, where he he'll he'll kind of just do it in silence. You know, he'll he'll put you on your back and then you know help you up and and just do it again and not say anything. And so that's that's probably where we differ the most is that he doesn't run his mouth too much um, unless he he kind of gets gets going. Then then maybe he'll say something or, or two, but. Yeah, that's probably where we did for the most. It's all good natured trash talk, though, right? Exactly. Yes, of course. I, I so I we we talked with Connor Pay, uh, the media scrum earlier this week, and I asked Connor about you, and I asked like, okay, who along the offensive line talks the most trash? And he said that he felt like most of the offensive line you guys are pretty pretty quiet. He said that you guys kind of handle your business, then you get back to the huddle, or you guys just get to the, get to the next player and trying to catch your breath. He's like, there's not a lot of yeah. time for us to yeah. talk trash, but. Is that true, or because you just yeah, mentioned, would, you'll I'd let them know? A lot of the trash talking, you know, when you're going against the same guys every 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 day, every week, you know, it mostly happens at practice. Okay, um, you know, maybe a little here and there in the game, but you know, when it comes to the game, I I, I tend to be a little bit more focused on on the task at hand and not not running my mouth too much. But you know how it is when when you go against the same guys every day. Uh, you know, sometimes things can slip out here and there. So, <laughs> fair, enough. fair enough. I can understand that. Uh, I've I've talked with uh, some former offensive linemen who played at the collegiate level and even at the NFL level, and they ha- all have had stories of guys they've played across from on the defensive line who were talkers, guys that just like to try and get in your head, that type of stuff. Do you have one or two, I guess, uh, moments that you can remember a, a guy saying something that just kind of caught you off guard? I know I'm putting you on the spot with that. Oh man, I, honestly, not anything I can think of right now. Not not nothing I can remember. So, 
Okay. Fair enough. I, it's just one of those things. So for example, (laughs) so I, I was coached by a guy by by the name of Eli Herring. He played for BYU in the 1990s. Uh, And his whole philosophy, and he coached me in high school. I didn't play past the high school level, but his whole philosophy for us as offensive linemen playing for him is he's like, you know what? You knock the guy down, you pick him up and say, that was fun. Let's go do it again. And you run back to the line. (laughs) To me, that kind of is, I guess, the more the philosophy what you talk about your brother Campbell having, where he's just, he'll he'll flat back you. Yeah. Up you up. And then he just... He doesn't say word goes right back and does it again. Yep. Yep. That's exactly how he does it. <laughs> well, at, 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 in some ways, I think that might be more insulting to defensive linemen than <laughs> you actually saying something to them. I, yeah, I don't know. For sure. <laughs> All right. I, I got a couple of fun questions. Uh, we're going to round out today's show with uh, Clark. I had a couple of actually send in uh, a couple of questions for you. We're going to get to those okay. as we continue on here with Locked on Cougars. All right, before we go here on Locked On Cougars, I want to remind you guys to make sure you check out the Locked On Big 12 podcast. It is, of course, your daily podcast focused on all things Big 12. BYU's new conference home in just over a year, uh, just under a year, excuse me, not uh, over <laughs> a year. Uh, it's coming quick, so check that out. Josh Neighbors is your host. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube. Really easy to subscribe to. And obviously, thank you for subscribing to this show as well. All right, final uh, stanza here on today's show with Clark Barrington. And Clark, I, I got a DM, and I, I actually I accidentally closed out of the page here, so I don't have the person's name. I apologize. But they asked me, can you ask Clark, uh, what's the inspiration for the mustache, and is it a mustache he's going to grow until they lose a game? Um. Well, to answer the second one, it's, It'll be here to stay no matter win or lose. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, I don't know. To be honest, it's the only thing you can grow at BYU, and so why not grow it? And you know, James James had a pretty good one going while he was here, and and so I was like, huh, maybe I'll join him and and, and have a mustache as well, and and then it's it's stuck ever since. So, okay. So, how long have you had that mustache? Is it over a year now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's been a while. Uh, hey, no I think problem. the last time I shaved it was for my wedding, and that was two years ago. And the missus is totally cool with it, I assume. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. here's the thing: she, she, it doesn't it doesn't bug her too much. Okay. So well, she hasn't given you an ultimatum to shave it yet. So I no, think you're doing something no, right. not yet. Okay. Not yet. Well, okay. That's that's a positive. So thank you for answering that question. Uh, also, so Clark, when it comes to games like that against Baylor, you already talked about the fact that that sea of humanity. When you're trying to find your family and friends, how do you go about doing that? Um, you know, I I, I had found them, you know, before the game was over, mm. and so you know I knew pretty much where they were at in the stands, um, and then kind of just rushed over to our benches and took shelter there while everybody was running past. (laughs) And then I was able to make my way up into the stands and and say hello to my family and friends. So, Well, that's awesome. Obviously we talked with Ben Bywater on my radio show. He joins us every week with DJ and PK and he said his chief concern. And I want to kind of throw this at you. He said his chief concern is he didn't want to like roll an ankle, uh, trying to kind of navigate his way. (laughs) Did you have any concern about stuff like that at all? Oh, for sure. You know, so, some of those some of those fans are, are are running out of control. You know, I actually saw you know one girl get absolutely just trucked by another person running by, and I was like, okay, this is this is chaos down here. And so, you know, just keeping my eyes out and, and watching where I'm going and, and trying to make it there safely. So, see, that's the thing about it is it's dangerous. I remember last yeah. year. I don't remember what game. Do you remember what game they they stormed the field last year? I I can't remember which one it was. There was one of them. I know they stormed the field, and yeah. I remember learning after the game that a dude had jumped from the student section. He actually compound fractured his leg, yeah. and yeah. they he just gotten married. His wife actually ditched him and then came back for him. <laughs> That's funny. Did, did you know about that story? Did you know about the guy getting I, hurt? I had heard. I had heard that somebody like broke their leg or something jumping down on the field, but, but that was, that was where the story ended. Well, <laughs> Hey, be careful out there, everybody. There's no, the, you, you, you gotta be smart. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Just have yeah. fun do it responsibly. Uh, were you hoping I saw Malik Moore got crowd surf? Were you hoping somebody's going to try and crowd surf one of you offensive linemen? Oh, I, I hope nobody tries to do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're gonna hurt. They're gonna hurt themselves if they do. So we'll, we'll keep they... both our feet on the ground. Fair enough. But wouldn't it like be a dream come true for you to be like crowd surfing, just having the time of your life? Yeah, I'm. I'm sure it would be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, uh, Clark, a couple of fun ones before we go here. Uh, we talked last week uh, about, we've actually talked a couple of times about food here, but, uh, the cougar tail thing has become a phenomenon. I talked with enough people from Baylor who are absolutely enthralled with cougar tail. Um, I've got one of these. Those are, that's the built bar cougar tail. Yeah. Uh, are you a big fan of, of cougar tails in the first place? Yeah, I, I, I love the cougar tails for sure. Okay, here's the thing. I enjoy them as well. I love a maple bar. There's no way I can finish one in one sitting. It's oh. just, it's, yeah. Are you the same way? I'm the same way. Now, I could probably finish half of one, but <laughs> a, full, a full one's pushing it. They're, they're super sweet. <laughs> uh, they are. And that's, that's the thing for me. It's like, it's just, it's just too much maple bar for me. Like, yeah. And that, that's the thing about it. Like, I don't know if you did. You see the clip uh, from the game of the people sharing it, like going well, down. Well, the people, yeah, taking by. Yeah, don't think I would participate in that, but uh, <laughs> you do you, I guess. Yeah, I, I that one, I, I, I will freely admit, I got a little grossed out when I was seeing that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what is going on here? Like, I, I don't know. Like, they're not that expensive, folks. I and mean, you don't need to share yeah. it with like 15 of your closest friends, but you know, yeah. that's just me. All right, so uh, final one here for you, Clark, as we round out today's show. Uh, as you guys head to Oregon, you're obviously a guy from the Pacific Northwest. What is the greatest part about the Pacific Northwest that Utah doesn't have? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. Um, there, there's a lot of great things that Utah has. Um, now I would say, you know, one thing that, that's super big out there, you know, there's just a ton of lakes. Um, okay. Lakes, you know, probably 30 lakes without, within an hour drive from, from where I lived. And so just always being able to go to the lake somewhere and, and go boating or whatnot. And, and so that was always nice. And then lots of, lots of pine trees covering the mountains out there. And, and so that's always, always a nice sight to see as well. well. I think we just learned the answer. If if they ask you lake or ocean, are you, are you picking lake? Yeah, I'm picking lake. <laughs> Fair enough. I, hey, I'm that. Uh, I'm a guy who grew up inland as well. I, I'm a Utah boy, and we have Utah Lake right there. You got yep. like you talk about the lakes being within an hour's drive. It's like the mountains here in Utah. You can go to a ski yep. resort in 30 minutes if you if you drive any direction. It feels like exactly, exactly. All right. Well, Clark, uh, best of luck against the Ducks this weekend. Obviously, we'll be watching. We'll be uh, catching up with you next week. Hopefully, talking about another W. Uh, by the way, how's it feel to be inside the top 15 after just two games? By the way. Yeah, it's it it's great. Um, you know, it's always great to to receive notice and and to keep winning. And we just got to keep doing it. Awesome. Well, Clark, thank you again for taking the time. We look forward to next Monday chatting with you, and obviously, best of luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, there you go, Clark Barrington. His weekly visit here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. As I mentioned, he'll be back next week. He's doing this every week with us. Appreciate him taking the time. That'll do it for this edition of Locked On Cougars. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Want to encourage you guys, make sure you subscribe to the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Search out Locked On Cougars. Search out Clark Barrington's Instagram feed. You can see right there at Clark underscore Barrington. It's got the Twitter icon, but that's actually his Instagram feed. Check that out. And obviously, come back next week for another visit with Clark Barrington right here. Unlocked